right hello 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 today is the start of a new vlog i am totally coming at you in my um pathfinder gear because i'm one of five people who really like mass effect andromeda <laughs> anyway anyway um so if you guys saw the community post or have been on my twitter or if you guys share discord with me you guys will know that the last week of my life has been a little mentally draining and so i didn't really want to record and that kind of has left me a little bit behind. Also, I have read all of two books, so you guys didn't really miss anything. I did finish Fairy Song by Rosaria Munda. Loved it. Um, I did finish Engines Chaos. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. I'm going to be screaming at everyone to read Engines of Empire for a while <laughs> and, until everyone listens. <laughs> I really, really love that series. And if you like dark fantasy and haven't picked it up yet, you're missing out. You're missing out. So I have needed a little bit of a mental break. I have actually read more than two books, but I'm being very hush hush about the other books that I've read because they were all SPSF series. I have one book left to read and that has kind of put a hold on my physical reading. Like all I'm doing is either audio or SPSFC. So I'm still reading No Land for Heroes, but I'm only about 50-ish pages in and have kind of been rewarding myself with a chapter. The chapters are kind of short, so it doesn't get me very far. <laughs> I will eventually like tackle this hardcore, but I am just trying to get through SPSFC first. So if I can't immersive read it or can't plug in the audio too clean, it kind of gets set to the wayside, which I hate because I would really rather be reading this one. And that's not to say that the books that SPSFC have been producing are bad. It's just half of them are just not my style. And so I do try to push through, but I can't give a good review sometimes whenever there's just nothing I like about the book. Not that it's bad. Like I said, it's just really hard for me. But Libby has come in and I will be reading The Writing Retreat. This is going to be my new immersive read. Like I said, No Land for Heroes, I will be tackling hardcore once I get through my next FPSFC raid, which if you're interested is night music. I'll post a picture of it up here. But yeah, that's where I am right now. I do think moving forward for this week, at least I'm going to be trying to pick up some shorter reads. I did have plans to go through some series and I think you guys saw my April reading plans. I swear to you, every time I make a plan, <laughs> the universe says, not nah, fam, you ain't doing that. So uh, I, I, I do, I kind of feel that way, but I don't know if it's real or if it's just imagined and that's how I feel. I do still want to tackle Mystic Reborn. Again, I'm going to have to do that at a time when I'm not reading SPSFC books and having to sit down with those. And you guys might be wondering why my physical reading is going to SPS, SPSFC if I have audio. So the reason for that is I'm trying to pay attention and I'm not saying I don't pay attention whenever I listen to audiobooks, but when I listen to an audiobook, just solely audiobook, I try not to do it with fantasy or sci-fi. I try to do that with like mystery thrillers or horror or something like that. Something that doesn't need my full brain power. And then with the uh, like sci-fi and fantasy, I want to immersive read it. So there's a difference. There's a huge difference. And then physically reading, I, I have to devote all of my time to that, like all of my attention. And so yeah, that, that, that's the explanation for that. <laughs> also guys, I'm like really tired, really tired, but I'm going to try and record some videos today. My allergies are kind of going crazy. I am hoping that I can keep up some energy. <laughs> and if I can't, well, it, it kind of is what it is, isn't it? So all right, I will update you guys whenever I get further in either the writing retreat or No Land for Heroes and let you guys know what my next book will likely be. I am also going to be participating in May the Force Be With You. This is, or May the Force Read With You, <laughs> automatic to come out the other way. I have not been letting myself do readathons. I have written them off as not for me because they tend to put me in a reading slump. However, however, the May the Force Read With You is kind of go at your own pace. There's no teams involved. Well, there's light and there's a dark side, but like, it's not really a competition. Not really. And so I'm just excited to kind of have some 
direction and what I'm going to read. I will have a caveat, but I'm going to be posting that video very soon. So that's it for me today. Um, I will check back in with you, like I said. Hello, lovelies. It is just a few hours later, but I have an update for you because I'm bothered. <laughs> I was reading the writing retreat and I am DNFing it. DNFing. I don't like whiny main characters. You guys are all aware of this and this girl. She is afraid of her friend. This is all I know so far because <laughs> this is how far I've gotten into it. Uh, because of something that happened and she is panicking every time she thinks she is going to have to encounter this ex-friend or you know whatever and she is just constantly constantly whining about it and i no so i think this is my problem with contemporary the things that i have been inundated with via the news via uh, social media and all that stuff i don't want to read about it i want to escape from all of that stuff so while I agree with some of the things that need to be talked about surrounding this. Um, I don't, I don't want to read about it. I do not want to read about it. And so, I mean, we can have face-to-face -face conversations, but this is why I read fantasy for the most part. So we are done. <laughs> Thank you. Next. <laughs> I am going to move on to blood of Troy. I believe that's what it's called. Um, I will insert the picture. It is audio and we're, we're, we're moving on. We're moving on from this because I, I don't like things like this. This is why I don't read contemporary works very much. This is why I don't care about contemporary <laughs> works. Like I said, face-to-face -face discussions, we can have a conversation, but don't, don't put it in my books. Hey guys, today uh, we are having the Hot Mess Express. Uh, my hair is just being fully uncooperative, so I put my hat on and said we're hiding the mess. <laughs> so I am 20% into Blood of Troy and I have to tell you I am really enjoying it. Really enjoying it. It's as fun as I remember the first story being. These books kind of read like you are reading the old Greek tales from a different perspective. However, the hero is now this human girl. And it's, it's really cool. It's kind of like ACO. If you guys have ever played Assassin's Creed Odyssey and you play as Cassandra, it's, it has that vibe. And so I'm really enjoying it. The first book I have been like thoroughly enjoying in a little while. No, I feel like I've had either straight hits or straight misses lately. And my dog is continuously obsessed with trying to knock over this tripod. <laughs> yeah. And then today I cleaned out my inventory on my shop, whatever wasn't in a cart or wish listed or whatever. I pulled it so I could take it to the buy sell trade. If you guys have seen a library tour of mine, uh, something I picked up at the buy sell trade today, I have a collection of pop figures. I'm going to put Ray up there next to Kylo. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I had to buy me a Ray. And then I picked up two books. So I got this one. I've never heard of it. Wesley Chu Time Salvager. It sounds like it's going to be good. I actually, I read most of the blurbs and didn't read actual synopsis. Convicted criminal James Griffin Mars is no one's hero. In his century, Earth is a toxic, abandoned world and humans have fled into the outer solar system to survive, eking out a fragile, doomed existence among the other planets and their moons. Those responsible for delaying humanity's demise believe time travel holds the key and they have identified James. Troubled though he is as one of the select and expendable few ideally suited for the most dangerous job in history. I'm stopping there because that's all I need to know. But this sounds like it's going to be really good. Have any of you guys read this? Cause I I'm, I'm interested. And then I found a book. I believe it was Jashana that I first heard talk about this and had me interested, but upon a burning throne, I, I don't remember who exactly it was that was talking about it. I think it was Jashana and said that it was just really good. Like it was a really good fantasy and, and she thick, she thick, she real thick deceptively thick though because it's like 662 pages it looks a lot thicker than that but I've heard very good things about this and I wanted to give it a shot it says in a world where demigods and demons walk among mortals the emperor of the vast burnt empire has died leaving a turbulent realm without an emperor two young princes Adrian and Shavat 
are in line to rule, but birthright does not guarantee inheritance, for any successor must sit upon the legendary burning throne and pass the test of fire. Imbued with dark sorceries, the throne is a crucible, one that incinerates the unworthy. Um, I'm going to stop there. Like I said, I sometimes I want to know everything before delving into a book, but sometimes I don't. But this sounds like it could be pretty dang good. And I want to give it a try. And as you guys know, I always am looking for more desert fantasy. And this just feels like it's going to be that. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Hi, Drakey. What are you doing? You going to knock that tripod over? What are you doing, Bubba? Hi, baby. Hi, my sweet boy. Oh, God, my sweet boy. How are you doing? You gonna come see your mama? You gonna come see your mama? Oh, you see my baby boy? You see my baby boy? No. <laughs> Alright, hey guys. Ignore the hair. I've had it in a hat all day because it refused to straighten. The humidity here is a little, <laughs> a little high and it said, nah fam, not happening. And so... My hair is just wild and a little greasy right now because it's been in a hat. Okay, and then apparently I wanted to pull my camera off the tripod because I forgot that my mic was attached and reached over to grab something. So today, a little bit of real talk. I'm having some PMDD and it's really affecting my desire to read. I did, however, finish Blood of Troy. I thought it was fantastic. These books are so fun. I think if you go into them expecting just a fun fantasy adventure in Greek mythology, it's going to be, it's going to be enjoyable. I really do think that they are good. What I like about them is they read kind of like missions on ACO, like you get a new mission and you get to follow this story that you know very well, but it's from a different POV. Like you're playing as Cassandra in the game in this story, you are following Daphne and Daphne is taking you through all of these stories that you know and love in Greek history. And Blood of Troy is obviously the Trojan War. Well, that goes down, according to Daphne. <laughs> Daphne has a relationship with Apollo. It's really entertaining to watch them. Apollo is obviously a god and acts like a god. So I think if you like stories where humans interact with the Fae, you'll like that about this story, how Apollo and Daphne get along or don't get along. Uh, but if you don't, this might put you off to it. So <laughs> keep that in mind in picking up these books. But I actually think that they are a ton of fun. I really enjoy them. I'm sorry that my PMDD is on top of me. Real talk. It messes with my mood. It messes with the way I think. It makes me a little depressed, but it also like kind of makes me angry. <laughs> the way it affects my reading is I don't like anything. Everything sucks. It doesn't matter what I'm reading. Everything sucks. So... I had been meaning to read until the last. That was like my goal. It's one of my books or series that I need to finish. It's definitely high on my priority list, but I'm currently ticked off and tired and cranky and worn out, like just all of the above. <laughs> and I don't know if that is the best thing to read right now. Maybe it'd be great. Maybe it would be cathartic. I don't know. But Libby has come in and my final hold other than Amina al Rafi, which I am still waiting on that might take a while <laughs> but my final hold from Libby has come up and that is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Now my PMDD is going to either love or hate this because this is cozy. I'm gonna read another cozy guys but I am interested in this because I do like stories of the Fae and I do think that that could carry me through this book if I don't like this. This will go up on my Pango. It is the special edition Fairy Loot, so it has the stenciled edges. It has the beautiful end papers. The book itself is fantastic, and it is also signed. So if I don't like this, it's not the end of the world, but I am going to let you know, like I said, my PMDD is on top of me. This could affect my reading of both of these books. Something that I am finding that is driving me insane. I'm still only 50-ish pages into No Land for Heroes. Why is this? So Libby's taken over. I need to get onto my April reading plans and SPSFC. I feel like I'm letting obligations take priority over 
what I actually want to read. This is something I have been trying not to do this year. So if I end up setting these two aside for No Land for Heroes, please don't be mad at me. <laughs> it's likely to happen because the same thing has happened to Azura Ghost in the past. Now, as you can see, I'm halfway through this. I am still reading this. Like every once in a while, I'll grab a chapter. But I have decided when Athera Grave releases, I am going to lock myself in my bedroom and read Azura Ghost and Athera Grave. And if anyone bothers me, uh, they will be hurt because I cannot stand not reading this book. <laughs> I had more tabs in it, but I tried to pull them out. I just saved that one because it's a really great representation of S's writing. So <laughs> also, I don't know if I showed you this, but my copy is damaged and I don't know how that happened, but it, it hurts my soul because this is one of my favorite series. So these two might end up just being what I read because my mood is telling me to forget my obligation reads and read what I want to read. And obviously these are the two that I want to read. I don't want to read my other books. I totally do. It's just, like I said, I'm having some issues with my PMDD and my PMDD just hates everything. So I'm scared to start something new and I'm scared to not like until the last because I'm mad at everything. And I'm scared to not like Emily Wilde because I'm in a bad mood and cozy doesn't usually work for me. So I don't know. I'm, I'm in a really weird headspace, guys. Really weird headspace. But I thought I'd come on here and kind of be real with you and let you know that life for me isn't always peachy because I deal with so many issues. I have PCOS, which that's, you know, the excessive amount of hair that I have on my body. That's where that comes from. You know, just kind of let you guys know that ADHD, dyslexia, those aren't the only issues I deal with. I have PCOS and because I have PCOS, I have PMDD and they go hand in hand, but they put me in a really awful mood. It makes me want to not talk to people. It makes me want to just lock myself in my cave, which this is my cave and play video games and just tell everyone to leave me alone. So I get that way with books too. Like I just don't want to be bothered reading. Yeah. So if you guys ever wonder why I go one week without filming, it's because nobody needs to see all of this. You don't want to watch a video where this is all you get is me just being, you know, just not happy with the world at all. So, all right, that's my update for now. I hope by tomorrow I will have made progress in something so I can give you guys a better update than what it is currently is today. So if you're like me, have PCOS, deal with PMDD, give me like a thumbs up so that I know you're out there and I'm not alone. See you guys in the next clip. Alrighty guys, this is my final check-in for the week. I am sorry that this video is going up so late. I am sorry about the way my brain has been lately. I mean, what can you say when you deal with as many issues as I do? Also, I have turned you guys to my shelf for a very particular reason. Um, if you can tell, I have done like a little revamp of this shelf, so I kind of wanted to show it off. I now have my Nevernight up here. Recently purchased Ray. You guys saw that. So now Ray and Kylo are up here. Um, I have moved all of my special editions over here and turned them with the sprayed edges out. Now, the reason I did this is because I moved uh, Lightbringer. Uh, I, it was taking up a whole lot of room on that shelf and I needed space to put like my paperbacks. And so I ended up stacking them sideways so that they could stack up. And that would be RJ Barker over there. Since there are six of his and another coming, <laughs> I needed the space. So, and then down here, these are kind of placeholders because as you can see, these series have been incomplete except for uh, Brian Lee Durfee, but there's Empire of the Vampire there and Burning Blade and Silver Eye and Engines of Empire. So I'm going to need the rest of that shelf later on, and I'm going to try and figure out some way to display my special edition books. I haven't figured that out yet. Talked about putting a shelf right back here that goes right above my couch. Not really sure what I'm going to do, but have them like face with the sprayed edge out. Don't know yet. Also have been talking to my husband about possibly doing built-ins in here. That way I have more room to put books because as you guys have seen with this unhaul project, I have books all over my floor. So <laughs> it's not really the best way to store books. 
and I have been dealing with some issues with the spines and the dust jackets are bending in weird places or like the edges of the books, like the corners kind of get rubbed off and it's just not conducive to storing books in the floor. But that's why we're here, right? That's what this whole project's about. Anyway, I need to give you guys an update on what I'm reading. Per my last update, I, I'm still not feeling great. Still not feeling great. PMDD is a lot to deal with. Like, I, I don't wish it on anybody, and I'm sorry if you have it, but this whole week I have struggled to read a lot. Now, I got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm just going to either sit and read No Land for Heroes or Azura Ghost and just go back to favorites and kind of forget whatever else is on my TBR. I didn't do that. I did not do that. The reason for that being is both Azura Ghost and No Land for Heroes are physical reads and I just didn't have time to sit down and read. So I went with an audio and that would be Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I'm about halfway through. I was really not excited to pick this up because everyone was telling me that it was cozy. Cozy is not my thing. It is not my thing. I don't like slice of life, stuff like that. Oh my gosh, guys. This, I don't know that I would deem it cozy fantasy. This reads like a fairy version of historical fiction, like a fae version of historical fiction. And I really love historical fiction. I think that the main character in here is really nuanced. She's cheeky, she's smart, and she <laughs> and she's just one of those types of characters that I really want to read about, especially in a historical fiction setting because women so often they have to deal with being put down by men and stuff like that. She does have to deal with that. You don't have to read about it a lot. Like it's not in the book, but she talks about it a little bit and you know, then one of her colleagues comes to join her. Uh, while she is writing <laughs> this dissertation, I guess, uh, this encyclopedia of fairies and <laughs> shenanigans ensue. Uh, it, it's, it's really good. It's really good. It's very deeply involved with the fae. The reason I wouldn't call it cozy though is because things happen. <laughs> like there are consequences. There are um, stakes <laughs> in this book. And while they are semi low stakes, I, I do think that you get enough out of this story that it can be a fully fleshed out story and not not just like what I've what I'm typically used to whenever I hear the words cozy fantasy definitely don't really think this could be cozy now fairy tale yes historical fiction with magic yes so I guess historical fantasy uh romance yes but I don't know y'all let me know like cozy where does that what does that tell you guys? Like, where does that hit for you? What does that make you think of? Because I don't know that I would call this cozy, <laughs> but yeah, it's great. It is great. I'm very excited about this coming in fairy loot. I'm excited to have a special edition of it because I'm absolutely loving it. But that is where I am going to end this particular vlog because I need to end this vlog. I've just had a horrible, horrible week. You know, having vacation, and then burnout and then PMDD. I feel like this month has just not been my month. That's fine. It's fine. You know, the last 30 days just haven't been kind to me. And well, and then I decided to go ahead and finish out my SPSF series, which I, I do still have one left. It's a shorter novel and I have to do it on ebook. So that's again, where my physical reading is going, doing the SPSFC. So while I haven't read much for these vlogs, I have been reading quite a bit. It's just been for SPSFC. We will talk about that. We'll talk about that later. So, cause I have things to say. So, all right, like, subscribe, do all the fun things. And I'll see you guys in my next video. If you'd like to support this channel, I do have a Patreon and it'll be in the link below. Bye. <laughs>